Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tea Time. Um, Nadine, Laura Lee, Beth, it's good to have you guys back today. And um, I think that uh, when I was um, listening to Nadine right before we got started and we were, we, were, we were beginning a conversation on stress and chemicals in our body and inflammation. And so we think we'll just jump right, right back into that. Um, and, uh, and, and begin to have that conversation and try and figure out, you know, what our experience can teach ourselves and each other and um, where to go from there. So welcome everybody. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah. Um, I just okay. wanted to pull up this one little comment that um, started our uh, discussion here. And it looks at uh, our behavior and it looks at caregiving specifically. Should have, shouldn't have opened my mouth until I found it. <laughs> um, and basically what it talks about is the uh, response and uh, what happens to the body of the caregiver specifically, that it changes our chemical makeup in a way that actually causes us to age faster. And we have higher level of disease processes and we have um, higher incidences of um, cardiovascular disease, uh, uh, diabetes, um, high blood pressure, and all of those are related essentially to caregiving, <laughs> you know? Um, so what are your thoughts on that, Larley? You were talking about some great studies. Yeah, what they found out from a while before they even got into noticing even more chemical imbalances and understanding connection was so that people who had been under chronic stress for different, for any reason, for that matter, um, they, you know, have high cortisol levels. And that has led to a markers that have, you know, got directly, let's just say, especially developing what they see a connection many times, cardiovascular, but also GI and the connection with the, the brain, the second brain they call the GI system, how much that then is related to your immune system that we haven't thought about. And people end up having autoimmune diseases and start breaking down in their own tissue. And, you know, they're the ones that need more and more care, but they're, meanwhile, if they're caregivers, they're giving more and more care. And they're just in a, it's a causing, if it's not who takes care of the caregiver, including oneself, but they notice it and aware. Um, at, some, at some point you do take a break from it. Now we all know people that cannot take a break from it. And that is part of the issue. But even if it's hours or days or respite. Or and, moments. You know, or moments. It's because it, every little bit is going to count into how much all of that gets suppress and our body starts learning how do we respond back to ourselves and heal that mm -hmm. you know and it might be a process oh that doesn't work yeah. oh but oh that I feel much better when I do that yeah you know and so I, I can keep going but do I want to kill over before my husband kills over and I've been trying to keep him going you know it's well, and that's one of the statistics too, isn't it? That caregivers oftentimes, um, they either get hospitalized or they will pass before the person that they are care caring for. Um, and we, you know, we do know that. But the, the reaction that I'm having is actually a really interesting um, one because I'm like, okay, I'm caregiving. I'm taking care of people. And now you're telling me I have to do this too. Like how much guilt can be put on me? How much am I suspected? Yes. Is that what sh now I have to worry about my cortisol levels because if I don't yeah. do that right, right? Wait, I so gotta go to the lab and like, check. I have to take care of my caregiver. I have to I have to do the finances. <laughs> I have to get everybody to the doctor. I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do the other thing. And now on top of it, you want me to take care of my my cortisol levels? I mean, yeah. really? Really? Are you out of your mind <laughs> right now? I know why you might have that reaction. <laughs> right? I get so it. How do we how do we navigate that? Nadine, you're a wellness person. How do we navigate that? That's just mind blowing. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. Like everything else, you don't become a caregiver overnight. 
You learn by each little individual thing that happens. And that's how you learn to care for the individual that you're working with. And taking on those one single moments, I think is an important thing um, to practice, practice, practice. You know, I think our opportunity is, um, is, in, is in learning skills that fit right into the finances and the shopping and the caregiving and the this and the that. There are skills that can fit in the midst of what you're doing that can help manage um, what's going on. Nothing erases it. And we all know that what we're talking about here is not a magic bullet. It is not a, you know, this discussion that they listen to us someday. And, you know, when, when someone's listening to this, they're going to be like, oh, wait a minute. You mean this isn't going to make everything all better? Well, no, we're here to tell you about the realities of it, but also here to tell you that we've walked this road, we've made choices in one direction, and then we made choices in another direction. And we can give you that information to help you and to guide you and to, you know, help you find your right way. Like Beth does with all of the parents that she meets with, right? Like that's your goal. Yeah, yeah, my, my goal is to help them with resources to make their lives easier because um, there's so many out there. And, you know, when you first get into caretaking for as a grandparent, you, you just don't know. Yeah, you just don't know. You just you know what's going on in your house and and that's it. And uh, yeah, for me, I uh, get up three mornings a week at 530 and I exercise with my girlfriend, neighbor, and we have been doing that for 30 years. Oh my God. Wow. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since our youngest were born. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a wonderful routine. Yeah. To yes. have that community connection, to have somebody who's not family that, you, you know, you have that intimacy and that friendship with is just right super powerful it is it's wonderful and um you know you can't you can't beat the as you said you can't beat the friendship you can't beat the adrenaline um you know that feel good after you exercise and mm -hmm. and um can't beat it yeah and the science shows that you know the time that you've exercised can actually mitigate the effect on your body so yeah we were talking about cortisol in the beginning and i found that little fact and it said that Caregivers are four times higher in some of these stress levels than people of their own age. And this is caregivers who were dealing with someone with dementia, as well as um, mothers caregiving for chronically ill children. Um, right. There's just a higher level of these chemicals. What they found, though, was that exercise, meditation, um, other health preserving practices can actually mitigate those challenges to your body. So do I have time to do an exercise? Well, maybe not, you know, maybe it is tough to get up at 5.30 or maybe your body is challenged already enough that exercise doesn't seem palpable, but you know, what does taking a minute to turn on the radio and dance? It's exercise, right? And it's good for your body, your mind. That's a, good, that's a really good suggestion because music and, and, uh, dancing is kind of a feel good thing. And it also can be an, a way of expressing that stress. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have whatever kind of music that you feel like reflecting. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I like that you brought that up to you, that you can do whatever kind of music you feel like reflecting. And even if you're dancing a slow ballad or rocking yourself as you're struggling, that's still action and function and the exercise can be both soothing and um, positive and, you know, release some good chemicals through your body. And breath, breath, and breath. breath, breath. People don't say, oh, I've got this. I carry it with me all the time. <laughs> but if I go <laughs> all day, uh, it's, it's not good for me. But if I learn one or two little breathing practices, 
Mm. And say even, you know, you know what it's like if you say about you're going to drink eight glasses of water at the top of the hour too, and then two hours go by and you're like, ah, I'm going to drink more water. But it's the same thing will happen if you think that you, if you say at the top of every hour, I'm going to stop and do this breath work and yeah. sit and do it. Mm. You may miss a bunch of them. But the whole point is like every other thing, you get yourself back into the discipline of doing it. Even if you're mm -hmm. going to turn right around and have a lot of craziness going on with sick people or children, um, and, you know, and there are obviously lots of other issues. Grown up people with mental health issues, very difficult. But you're like, but I did that. I don't have the time to do 15 minutes of it, mm -hmm. but I've learned five minutes. And after a while, you start, most people start noticing with the discipline of it. I really miss that. Yeah. Like my, I really miss when I miss that. Like, I can't imagine your body would let you know pretty fast that uh, your whole mental health system would really suffer from stopping doing this wonderful thing you do with your uh, exercise and your walking. It's like everything else. I tell people with yoga, you don't have to do a 45 minute class. It looks like, you know, and pay a ton of money of it. Once you, if you get into something like that, it's helpful. You're busy one day, do five minutes on the mat, five only. That's all you have time for, but it builds a little discipline inside of you. Mm, right. And to the point where your body starts going, I have to have this or I will not be good for that other person I love so much. Well, you know what? That's a neat little trigger, believe it or not. Um, if we do something and it um, feels good, our brain will remind us to do it again. Because yeah. the signals that we receive from the body will trigger the mind to say, oh, we can't forget that. And the brain yeah. always naturally wants to do what's best for the self, right? Yes. We're yes. really trying to do what's best for ourselves and the people that we care about in turn. Right. Drink an ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> My brain is always saying ice cream. I'm not sure if that's the right thing or not. Not sure right. if that's where you were going. It's a bicep curl. It's a bicep curl. <laughs> there you go. It makes you aware of doing My that. My brain needs too. ice cream. <laughs> but I'm just teasing. But it is true. It Lots is true. of people have problems in the world because what they have learned, this mm -hmm. can be all of us about our little addictions, right? Mm -hmm. What they have learned is the body does want to naturally go towards what feels better, what feels good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in different times of our life, that might be triggered. For a lot of people to mean medication, to mean self-medicating, to mean drinking drugs, all of that. Ice cream. So, you Ice know, cream. maybe before you get to needing that part, it mm -hmm. would be nice if you could figure out other ways. Not all of us have been fortunate all parts of our life. Well, and I do like do. that. I really like the idea um, and think it's it's a very good strategy for folks to, you know, just even if they put it on their phone, you know, if we put it on the phone and, and every on the half hour, whatever, just have something ringing and dinging and saying, hey, it's time to take care of yourself, right? Right. Just, and, um, right. and break away, learn how to break away momentarily uh, from, from that, that process. And, um, and, and the other thing too, is just, uh, we talked about, you know, during the daytime what to do, but I also think that we could have um, at another time a whole conversation about sleep and healthy yeah. sleep habits. Um, very hard for a lot of people. Very patients. hard for caregivers, especially when they're getting up in the middle of the night to take care of somebody. And so we really respect that. But how do you get a good night's sleep, maybe two or three nights a week at least, if you can, uh, if, you're, if you're especially taking care of someone who has to get up or needs care in the middle of the night? Uh, mm -hmm. Or if you're on the night shift, can you sleep during the day? And who's covering during the day, and that's where you know we we continue to to uh, encourage people to think about building a wraparound team. Oh yeah, I was going to say that relates to wraparound. Yeah, you know we have to have wraparound teams if we're going to survive um, at, at our best selves, and so that continues to be you know the mission that we're about, um, as well as you know all the other messages that we have. So good. Great. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for stopping in for tea time and sharing. And I hope you are taking time for yourselves today. <laughs> and, um, and we will be back in touch very soon. Let us know what you need. Thanks.